Welcome to this edition of Barefoot Pools Pool School. Today we will be talking about the programming of a Pentair IntelliFlow variable speed prompt. So first thing I want you to notice when we're getting ready to do our programming is what the pump readout tells you. First of all, you always want to notice that you have a green light here. That's basically your power light, shows that you have power to the pump. If you don't have a green light, your display will not be on, you have lost power somewhere along the lines. Next thing we want to do is we want to press the menu button to go into our programs. From the menu button, you can press the down arrow to choose your different selections from within the menu. You have settings, you have speeds, your external controller, features, priming, antifreeze, and then back to settings. To get into a particular setting, you press the select button. From within settings itself, you have a couple different options. First is your pump address. If you have more than one pump, it would be pump address one, pump address two for the second pump, pump address three for the third pump, and so on. We're dealing with a single standalone pump right now, so pump address one is fine. Next, you'd set your time. Um, you can set it for an AM, PM, or a 24 hour clock. If you would like to change this, you simply sec hit the select button, press up or down to make your changes, and then press the enter button to make the changes stick. If you accidentally hit the select or enter button at the wrong times, you simply get a key error. It's no big deal. You can move on from there. You can set your temperature unit to Fahrenheit or Celsius. You can set your contrast level for viewing of the screen. You can select your language. You can set what's called your minimum RPM speed. Basically, this pump runs as low as 450 RPMs. It also runs as high as 3,450 RPMs. If you were to change this minimum speed under settings within your speeds menu where we actually set the programming of the pump, you would not be able to go below what you set as your minimum or go above what we set as your maximum in the settings menu. So 450 is what our minimum is. 3200 is what this particular pump is set for at its maximum. It can go as high as 3450, producing a full two horsepower. We dumb them down to what the pool actually needs. This particular pool has a water feature, so we that likes to run at 3200 RPMs. So that's the lowest speed, or the, the maximum speed that we allow this to run at. You can password protect it if you, if you like. And then back to pump address. Basically within settings, the main things that you change here are set here initially are your times and your minimum and maximum speeds. Once you're done with settings, you simply press escape to back up one, press down to get to our speeds menu. Speeds one through eight is where we actually do the programming of the pump. We set what RPMs we want it to run at, and we set what times we want it to start and stop. Most commonly, we use two different speeds. We use a high speed and a low speed. The high speed is set high enough for your cleaning system to work. If you're running a vacuum, that's usually be somewhere between 2400 to 2800 RPMs. If you're using pop-ups or in-floor heads, that's usually somewhere between 2800 to 3100 RPMs. Every pool is a little different, so you'll have to dial in the correct speed for your pool. If I select to go into this, you notice that we have speed 1 through 8. Speed 1 through 4 are, are default as manual speeds. If I hit select here, you'll see that it shows manual. If I press the down arrow, it tells me what RPM speed 1 is set for. Speeds one through four, I like to set at manual speeds due to the fact that you can actually 
press these buttons and turn them on. A manual speed will run, once activated, until a program kicks in and takes over. For example, if I press speed 1 at 8 o'clock in the morning, but I don't have a program set to run into my variable speed, to start my variable speed until 8 o'clock at night, it's going to run for 12 hours until that program overrides it. If I press speed 1 at 7.30 at night, it will run for a half hour before the variable speed takes over. You can also set these up as an egg timer, which basically just tells it to run for a certain amount of time and before going back to its programming, which is nice. But we usually set your quick clean to do that. It's something we'll talk about later in this video. So you'll see that speed one is manual. Speed 2 is manual for a different RPM. Speed 3 is manual for a little bit higher of an RPM. And speed 4 is manual for a little bit higher of an RPM. So these all come preset from the factory. Speeds 5 through 8 are what I like to call our hidden speeds. This is where I like to put our schedules. Speed 5, I like to set up for what we call our high speed schedule. You can know, you know that it's scheduled because it will say scheduled on there. If you come to this screen and it shows disabled, you simply hit select, highlight to schedule, and press enter. You click down one. This is our chance to set the RPM. This particular pool runs a vacuum and we need 2800 RPMs to properly run the vacuum and skimmer split. Starting this pool on the high speed at 9 o'clock at night. The reason I like to start the high speed at 9 o'clock at night, from a power usage standpoint, it will always be off your peak hours, and it's not so late that you can't come out and peek your head out the window and make sure that your vacuum is running properly. Depending on the size of the pool will depend on how long you want your high speed to run. This is a standard 15,000 gallon play pool I run it for approximately four hours a day to allow the vacuum to clean the bottom of the pool. To change these times, you simply hit the select button, move the arrows up or down to select your proper start or stop time. Once it's selected, you press the enter button to make it stick. And press escape to get back to your speeds. Then we would go to speed six Speed 6, as you can see, is already scheduled for 1400 RPMs. This is what we like to call our low speed. I like to schedule our low speed starting around 7 or 8 in the morning and run it for another 6 or 7 hours during the day. At low speed, basically what we're doing is just turning your water over at a very low rate. This does a couple of different things for you. One, it's very energy efficient. Two, it does a very good job of filtering the water because you're not jamming a bunch of water through your filter at a high speed. So it allows your filter to do an actually a better job of filtering. What I like to tell my customers is this. If you're not happy with the way the bottom of your pool looks, the floor of your pool, you want to change your high speed setting to, to, to run longer or maybe to run at a higher RPM because the high speed setting is what's going to change, or what is what's going to clean the bottom of the pool. If you're not happy with the clarity of the water, then you want to add time to your low speed, which is ideally your cheap speed, and since it doesn't cost you as much to run from a power usage standpoint. The reason I like to run your low speed during the day, is, especially here in Arizona, it's more efficient for the pool. It keeps the water turned over and it helps with the evaporation of your chemicals during the, the heat of the summer. If you would like to stay off of your peak hours at all times, you still have speed seven or speed eight that you can add additional time if you wanted to work around certain times of the day.
going to escape back twice to the main menu. I'm going to go down and I'm going to talk about your features button, your features menu. Basically what features does for you is it programs something called your quick clean button and your timeout button. As I go into the menu, your first choice is timeout. What timeout does for you is it allows you to turn off your pool for a certain amount of hours. Once those hours have passed, your pump will automatically go back to its program. So if you go into timeout by pressing the select button, you'll notice that you have a timeout duration listed in hours. If you press the up or the down arrow, this is the only choice you have within this menu is hours because all it's going to do is turn your pump off for a certain amount of time. So if you guys are going in the pool with the kids and the kids don't like the vacuum hose running while they're in the pool, you simply come over, press the timeout button, the pool stops running for three hours. After you guys are done swimming, you don't have to worry about coming back over to the pump, walking through the rocks in your bare feet to turn the pump back on because after the three hours is complete, the pump's going to turn itself on. Going to escape out one time, press the down arrow to give it a quick clean. Quick clean is the exact opposite. Quick clean will turn the pump on at a set RPM for a certain amount of hours. Currently we have it set at 2900 RPMs for 10 minutes. I usually like to set this up to mirror my cleaning RPM, which we have set at 2800 RPMs. And I like to run it for anywhere from two to three hours. On the other hand, the quick clean will do just the opposite. It will start your pump for a certain amount of hours at a, at a select RPM. I like to set the quick clean to mirror my high speed RPM because I know that is a speed that my vacuum will work. And I usually like to set it for two or three hours. The current time on this is set for 10 minutes. So to change that, I'm gonna press the select button going to move my cursor over, move it for two hours, press the enter to make it stick. Now what will happen when I have 